Welcome to the Market Edge Tech Talk with Will Pauley and special guest David Blake. We're going to review the market conditions of the past week, as well as longer term trends from a technical perspective, take a closer look at the major indices, and to wrap it up, dig into a handful of individual stocks and ETFs requested by subscribers. If you have questions or want to submit a stock for next week's webinar, email us at support at marketedge.com. Hello and welcome to the Tuesday Tech Talk for Tuesday, August 28th. My name is Will Pauly and I'm here with my co-host, David Blake. David, how are you doing today? Good, Will. How are you? Doing all right. Uh, let's get started with the market letter. David, can you give us a quick rundown of what's been happening this past week? Yeah, let's go ahead and go to the market letter. Okay, last week we had the S&P 500, the NASDAQ, Dow Jones Transportation Index, and the Russell 2000 all punched new record highs. Um, Investors bid up the market last week, basically on talks that uh, progress in trade talks with China and Mexico, which the, the deal got done, I believe, on Friday afternoon, gave us another little boost uh, to push these markets to new highs. Uh, traders were pretty much risk on. We had uh, consumer staples were red, utilities were red, uh, energy actually led the uh, the market higher on uh, a spike in crude oil prices on a much larger drawdown in stockpiles. Technical condition of the market uh, looks good in here. We're, um, you know, RSI, the 14-day RSI is uh, is all positive on the different indexes. The AD line, is, which we'll look at in a little bit uh, on the NYSE, is uh, hitting new highs every, every day. Big strong day yesterday. Um, we're getting broader uh, participation uh, as far as the number of stocks making new highs. The AD line for the, NY the NASDAQ is also uh, expanding. Um, all good stuff right now. We, uh, you know, our, as the CTI is still bullish. As you can see, we're a, a plus four. That's uh, projected to stay at a, a in positive territory for probably another three or four weeks. Uh, you know, into into September, we may have a little bit of a slowdown when some of the uh, cycles turn over uh, at the end of uh, September into October. But uh, it won't be for very long. Long, and then we'll be back uh, bullish for the remainder of the year. It looks like. Um, let's see, real quick over here, the momentum index is still a positive plus five. That just that just shows you that the other indexes are all outperforming the Dow, which is positive divergence. We'd like to see that. You don't want to see the Dow uh, punching out new highs by itself. And the sentiment index is the, probably the only little bit of a red flag. People are starting to get a little bit too bullish again. Uh, we saw the um, uh, percentage of bullish investment advisors jump up to 57.7. Uh, that's been a, um, in cautious uh, red flag territory now for several weeks. There still aren't any bears out in the market. Percentage of bearish investment advisors at 18.3. That's still bad and uh, really low. And, of course, in the VIX, uh, finished up on Friday at 11.99, uh, which you know, anything below 13 is, 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 uh, is considered a little bit bearish, especially once it breaks down below uh, 11 if it gets into 10s and 9s. Uh, that just shows a little bit too much complacency. You know, now we're, we have we're going to a period now where the uh, earnings, second quarter earnings period is uh, pretty much wrapped up. But what's good about this with the market um, that we're looking at, we're not seeing a lot of downward revisions on earnings. That was a problem that we we were afraid we might get um, towards the end of the second second quarter when all this trade tariffs were taking place. You you had to wonder whether or not um, analysts were going to cut. Uh, some of the earning projections for, for the companies, especially the multinationals. And we do have a couple of headwinds that we're still looking at. The U.S. dollar still looks strong, um, although it, it, it did pull back a little bit yesterday, which helped uh, the market in, in general. And uh, that part of the, also that was basically because the, uh, the Chinese said they were going to try to firm up their currency, which uh, would be good. So uh, if we could get the dollar to pull back a little bit more, that would be bullish for stocks. But we did finish uh, yesterday very overbought. I think the S and P short term oscillator was a five point one, I believe, which is you know anything over four is basically overbought. So we we need to do some consolidation in here, maybe a little sideways, a little back and forth trading over the next uh, you know for the rest of the week, and maybe we can uh, start to push push higher from there. All right, thanks, David. Uh, now that we've done market letter, let's move on to our market recap and look at some of our internal breadth indicators. Go over here to our homepage, our market recap. All right, we'll go on down the page here. Okay, as you can see over here on the left-hand side, uh, we have the NYSC advanced decline line. We, we last few weeks we talked about 
if we get some consolidation over here, then we we needed to break above this area, which we we uh, we have. That looks good. The uh, advanced decline on the Nasdaq also is breaking out up, up to new highs over here. Not new highs, but uh, breaking above this this pattern back here. That just shows with that with that is we consider that a leading indicator in the, in the market direction. And both of those are saying that we're going we're going higher. Uh, it also is showing that the number of stocks that are that are moving up is expanding, which you want to see. And uh, uh, also with that, what you'll look at right below that is the number of new highs and new lows. As we've talked several weeks uh, in the past, I want to see expansion of the number of new highs with the number of new lows trending lower. That's exactly what we're starting to get over here. I'd like to see the uh, I'd like to see on the NYSC up here closer to uh, towards the 200 mark. We finally got that on the Nasdaq, which I like to see. That's good. Uh, again, we're, we're, it's not just the Fang stocks right now that are uh, pulling the rest of the market up. We're seeing nice broad participation in all the sectors. Value stocks are moving higher. Um, you know, just just about everything. It's not just you know small caps. Everything are, is going up at the same time. And that's what you want in a, in a healthy market. The transportation index, uh, again, you know, they're making goods. You got to move those goods. The transports are also making new highs, which means they're busy moving stuff around too. So, um, you know, the, the breadth we, we, we saw pointed out some negative divergence a couple weeks ago. That's that's pretty much disappearing. And we're starting to see uh, firmness in the uh, internal breadth, which is uh, again signaling that we have a little bit ways, a little more ways to go in this uh, bull run. All right, now that we've got an idea of how the broader market is moving, let's discuss something that we briefly talked about on the show here two or three weeks ago, but didn't really have the time to fully explain to the viewers. I'd like to take uh, a minute to look at our P&F charts and, uh, and, and our help section for these charts to help our viewers develop a deeper understanding of you know, how to use these things and what exactly they are. All right, point and figure charts. We'll go over here right now. The, okay. Um, Here's a stock over here, Advanced Micro Devices, which we're going to talk about in a little bit. But for every stock that we follow in uh, Market Edge, we have several different uh, uh, charting, charts that we have. We have, of course, the uh, smart charts up here. But on the actual uh, second opinion itself, we give you a, the, the quick chart, which is just, uh, you can go there briefly just to find something here to, to just to see what, this, what the stock is doing. But we also give you the uh, point and figure chart. I right, want to talk about this a little bit because we talked about this as far as uh, you know how you can maybe use this to to check out on uh, check out earnings whether we whether the market thinks they're going to uh, beat or possibly uh, uh, have a little shortfall. The point and figure charts date back all the way um, basically to the inception of modern market analysis. It's 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 a, a pure supply and demand chart. In other words, uh, when when a stock is in in demand. It's going to be moving up, and that's going to give you a series of X's every time it goes up a dollar. Uh, when it's uh, being uh, distributed, that'll be you have a little bit more supply as uh, uh, has control. You'll start seeing a series of zeros going down. Okay, typically these what we do is they have a uh, uh, each box going up or down represents one box or one dollar. All right, in, in order for this to go from X's to zeros to change the direction, it takes, we have what we call a three box reversal. Okay, in other words, if we get to uh, say 25 and we start to go sideways to down, we'll stay on those on this series of X's until if it goes, if it say if it's 25, it'll, it'll take all the way down to 20, a trade below 22 before we will reverse back to zeros. That's, that's your three box reversal. And that's uh, what some traders will, will, will use. They, don't, they, they think uh, anything below that, you know, less than that, is just a little bit of market noise. So um, we also we, we have different price points below $20. Um, each X will represent a half of a point move. And then um, so it'll take a dollar and a half to go down. And then uh, above 100, I believe we use a five box. Uh, take, uh, each box represents a dollar, but it's a five dollar. Uh, reversal to change to the zeros. All right. One of the most common uh, ways to use point figure chart formations, and I'm going to go ahead and, and move over here to the advanced tools, is, is that the uh, the buys and sell signals are uh, 
are, are some of the best buy and sell signals you, you can get in, in technical analysis. The reason being because when you have a, a breakout, uh, it's, it's, it, you, have, you have that breakout because the, uh, uh, the stock is breaking through a resistance area. Okay, over here we have the uh, point figure top breakouts. These are all the stocks that broke out yesterday. What I want to do is like, I, I click on the formation here, and you're going to see here we have a double top down further. We, we have triple tops. Let me expand this out to 60. We had an awful lot of stocks break out yesterday. And here we have all these double tops coming in here. We have triple tops. You can even get a quadruple top, and we're going to look at those in just a second. But um, heading back to the top here, let's pull a chart up over here. Here's a double top on uh, on Sienna Corporation, C-I-E-N. We'll head over here to the second opinion, put in C-I-E-N. Okay, we're along the stock, and you can see at the top here, we had a point and figure double top breakout. So what exactly does that mean? You know, this is actually a triple top breakout. And what that means is Sienna in the past, okay, you'll, you'll look, first of all, you're going to know this, these numbers. You know, one, one through nine, and then uh, A, B, and C. All right, one through nine represents January through September. Not all point and figure charts will have these. We, we do put them up. And then once we get, rather than put a 10 in here to confuse people, we have an A, B, and C. If the uh, A is where the 9 was, uh, it's not going to show up. It'll wait till the next month so we don't get a, get things over overriding here. But in the past, in June uh, last year, Sienna came up to this $28 range and didn't, didn't get past it. That was as high as we got. And we had it we reversed, came all the way back down to 1950. Uh, we reversed again, came back up to that $28 area, could not get through it, reversed again. Then we tried it for the third time. Okay, the third time, we got up there in July. Yesterday, I guess, we uh, we broke out above 28 for the first time. And this is your buy signal right there. You, this, is a, this is a breakout of a triple top uh, formation. In the past, uh, some people have done some, some uh, work on this. When you get a double top uh, breakout, you have basically, it, it, I, mean, I believe, something like six months down the road, Normally, you're going to have something like a 75% chance the stock is higher. Uh, a triple top goes up to something like 80, 82%. If you get a quadruple top, it's something like 85 to 90% of the time the stock is higher. So, when, so traders will take this and they will buy it um, once the breakout occurs. Now, we actually go one step further than uh, most point fig figure charters, and there's a whole group of people that. That's all. This is all they look at because it's just supply and demand. They don't want to buy this until they get the breakout. But we do something we call the point figure early alerts, which out of all these traders that, that do that, we're going to front run the uh, point figure guys because what we're going to do is we're going to give you the stocks that are going to break out today. So this is updated last night after the after the close. We're, when you go in there into the market edge, we're going to give you a list of stocks that will break out today if they trade at a breakout price. So this is the this is the breakout price and what formation they're going to break out of. Okay, so this first one here, this Accenture ACN, uh, closed yesterday at one sixty six eighty seven. Here up at the up in the uh, let's see here. Eh. That's not going to let me go up there. But you can see up there, we had a, uh, we can see the X's and O's up there where we had to break out. Um, and actually, once, once that broke above 165, you had one, two, three, you did four, four times you tried to break above that thing. So that was a nice breakout there. Um, but if you want to trade this, what you would do, the breakout price is 170. Maybe you put a buy ticket in, say, at 170.10. So if it doesn't break out, you don't buy the, buy the stock. But what you do want to be, you want to have your ticket in line and ready to buy when that breakout occurs. Okay, here's Amazon down here with another one. Uh, let's take over here a double top on Amazon. And as you can see uh, up in the, in the right-hand corner, you have a series of, uh, of um, uh, you actually have, you're going to have a spread double top where if it breaks out of that new high, you're going to have another thing. So 1928 would be the double top. You could put your buy ticket in 1929. You buy the breakout in Amazon that way. If it doesn't break uh, 1928, 
your ticket could sit there for for three months if that's if, that, if it doesn't break out and you're not buying a fake uh, a false breakout. Now sometimes what you want to look at on point and figure charts is once they break out, occasionally they'll, they'll come back and they will trade back to the breakout price where they where they test that support level or the breakout uh, level and then they will uh, bounce off of that. So if you do miss it, sometimes you'll get a second chance to buy these. Um, by these stocks. Now again, we we, have, we we update those every day in advanced tools. Uh, you can find all the stocks that broke out the previous day, or we, we front run the point figure guys, and you can get your uh, list of stocks that are going to break out today if they trade at a certain price and what the formation is. The one thing uh, that I do, do want to bring out on this uh, on the opinion thing, when you buy a, uh, when you get a breakout. Um, it's it's best to be uh, trading in the direction of the opinion. In other words, if I'm looking for uh, breakouts to the upside, I don't want to be buying a breakout on a uh, stock that's been, that's been downgraded to an avoid. The reason being is that often that will be uh, basically just a dead cat bounce. It'll be a stock that's broken down, it reached a certain support level, and bounced off of that level. And um, uh, you, you, you want to try to trade with the trend the broader trend in the uh, of the stock. So you want to look for stocks that have been upgraded to a neutral or a long when you're uh, looking to buy uh, buy the point figure stocks. All right, and uh, just real quick before we move on to our customer question section, let's look over at this uh, this help center for our charting features. I'll get started. And we'll look over here at point and figure chart formations. And this page will actually give us a nice little resource that we can look at for double top breakouts, double bottom breakouts. So you can look at these different chart formations. And uh, instead of looking back through this video to, see, uh, to sort of see how, how we've told you how these things work, you can look at these and uh, while you're going through your, your week uh, trading, you can, you can see how these stocks measure up to these formations that we've we've given you. So right, well, you know, one, let me jump in here real quick. Yeah, go ahead. Because I didn't go over you know, since, the, since we're bullish on the market. You know, I'm basically looking for uh, point and figure breakouts, uh, bullish patterns. Okay, if if we're bearish on the market and you're looking for stocks that are going to break down, uh, you can go in here and you can also look for double bottoms, triple bottoms, and quadruple bottoms of stocks that are breaking down. In this case, here's a uh, AXDX. It came down here and uh, you know, tested this area. Here's a spread formation, which would be a triple spread triple formation. But this is a double bottom here. Once it broke there, that would be a sign that you could short that stock, and uh, you can stay short until it uh, re until it reverses on that. So, uh, when we're bearish in the market, um, uh, again, you just go to the advanced tools and just look for the point figure uh, bottom breakouts or point figure uh, bottom breakout alerts. Right, and uh, as you you were you're going over this earlier, but uh, we've got this uh, this neat little uh, spread here for uh, percent of time profitable, average percent gain, average time for gain. Um, so here it's you got your double tops, uh, eighty point three percent per percent of time profitable, average gain percent thirty eight point seven, and uh, this over here is your double bottom percent. So you can use these to you know sort of in, uh, inform your your investing strategies here. And you've got the, your your triple bottoms and triple tops here. So yeah, that's 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 really what we wanted to go over this week. Um, now let's let's move on to our customer questions. Uh, we had a question about on, on the gold miners and oh gold miners. We think okay. that uh, gold is, is, uh, has, has may have bottomed in here. Uh, go ahead and pull up uh, put up GLD. This is the uh, gold. It's an ETF um, for gold. As you can see, it's just been straight down here. We're up. This gold is actually trading around almost around thirteen hundred something over here. Uh, it's just been working its way st steadily down. Uh, I, I don't. You know, I think you may have a little bit of a bounce on gold right in here. But one thing about it with gold, there's there's a couple of things that uh, uh, other in intermarket analysis that you want to watch. Uh, that also will, will reflect how gold is going to be. Number one, if, if rates are going higher, gold isn't your best investment. Uh, gold is better uh, to buy when rates are coming down than gold will appreciate. And also a, a strong U.S. dollar uh, is also something that uh, you, you don't want to look at when you, uh, you know, you, you don't want to have when you're investing in gold. Put up a UUP. I want to compare this 
this is uh, the gold ETF compared to uh, the U.S. dollar. As you can see, there's an inverse relationship to this. The top one is, is the U.S. dollar. Dollar is getting strong. Gold is going down. Okay. Uh, here's the dollar. Weak, weakened a little bit over here through, uh, towards the end of 2017. We got gold that came up from about 1200 up to around 1300 The dollar started to firm up over here. And uh, again, and now you're seeing how gold is taking this, this down here. We, we haven't had a little bit of a pullback yesterday. <coughs> you know, President Trump wants to, uh, you know, try to talk the dollar down because uh, a strong dollar also hurts our uh, multinationals uh, when they, because it, it uh, presents a currency uh, uh, convergence problem when they bring their profits uh, and, and uh, sales back to the states. So as, as he tries to talk the dollar down, you could get a little bit of a uh, oversold bounce on gold. This isn't a move that's going to go from uh, 1200 to 1250 or 1300. In fact, uh, let me go over here to stocks again. Go ahead and put in UUP. Okay, here's the U.S. dollar. Uh, you can see it's kind of worked, worked its way down a little bit over here finding support uh, at the, uh, I believe this is the 50-day moving average. Uh, so it's, it, it may not have that much more to go. I'd like to see what the 200-day moving average looks like, too. Okay, it could, it, could, it could come back a little bit further for the 200-day down around 24.20 on this. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, here, here's gold. Let's take a look over at uh, UUP on here on the chart of this. Again, you can see some back and, some back and forth trading over here, um, where we're starting to come back here towards some support levels. I don't I don't foresee with, with our rates going up, I don't I don't see much of a breakdown in, in the dollar. Um, you have you have you had like you had this little bit of a pullback. A lot of this is the president trying to talk the dollar down, but I would think that uh, you're probably looking for, at support down in this area if you wanted to use the Fibonacci retracements. On this, you could probably go to here and say, "Okay, we get a third retracement." That's uh, you know, we're looking on the UUP to come down here to uh, I don't know, maybe twenty twenty four and change. That might be about as, as low as we're as they're going to be able to talk it down with rates going up. So uh, I, I think that the gold itself is just having a little bit of a dead cat bounce. Uh, one of the questions was on this on gold was also. Would this be a time to look at the uh, uh, gold miners? So put in GDX. GDX, this is one of the ETF gold miners. You can see as gold's fallen out of bed, so has uh, the gold miners. Uh, it has a little bit of a bounce in here. Uh, relative strength, or RSI is picking up. It's still uh, you know, negative momentum. Uh, we, are, we were below 40. You want to see that. Uh, you, you, you'll probably you could get a bounce up here at around 60 something on the uh, on the RSI, which would bring this thing maybe up to the 50-day moving average. I'm not even sure it would get to that. You have a gap here that you could fill, uh, but anything with these, I think, is, is basically just a uh, it would be a short-term trade for you to 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 get in on a bounce. Put up uh, GG. This is one of the gold mining stocks, Gold Core. You see the exact same pattern on this. Gold's falling out of bed. This falls out. They're all getting a little bit of a bounce in here. You maybe get a trade up here to the 50-day, so you go from uh, 11 to maybe 12 on that. Just a little bit of a bounce. Another one would be, be ABX. And you're going to see the same thing. As gold, as gold falling out, falls out of bed, ABX does too. And they all kind of bottomed over here at the same time. And, and if we do the comparison with any of these with UUP, you'll see that, uh, you know, it just, started, it just started to roll over, this this, this ticked up. So um, uh, as far as the gold miners go, uh, it's strictly, to me, it, it looks just, just like a little bit of a, a short-term bounce as the as the president tries to talk down the, uh, the, the dollar. If we get a more of a, uh, you know, if we get, if we get uh, a uh, rate raise, uh, interest rate hike in uh, September, that could firm the dollar even more. And that's what. That's another one of the reasons why you're not trying to, to jump out of uh, the U.S. market and go into emerging markets right at this stage because 
the U.S. dollar and our rising rates is not going to be good for emerging markets. Uh, they're underperforming. They're down about six, seven percent for the year, while we're up six or seven percent. But uh, that, you don't want to jump out and, and and try to catch an oversold market. But we we still should lead as long as uh, our, our dollar uh, remains fairly strong. In here. All right. I think uh, we've got what two more uh, AMD and SOX. Uh, well, you, have to you can't talk about one without talking about the other. Go ahead and put up uh, AMD. Let's go to the second opinion first. All right. Go ahead and pull up AMD here. Okay, it's been a skyrocket uh, lately. They had some great earnings. Um, I know that they're, they're uh, as far as the fundamental picture goes, they're competing with NVIDIA with uh, you know some of their uh, graphics, graphics uh, and all. And the stock uh, is actually almost where it was back, I believe, 2000, somewhere where it topped out around the 40 level. I know some analysts have raised their price targets on, on that uh, uh, as far as AMD. My only problem with this as far as um, what I think you know, can happen, I'm not – the, the Philadelphia semi, Semiconductors, put in SOX. Uh, has been has been going pretty much sideways. Now we're in a little bit of a. You could you could go into the smart charts, which we, which we'll go into. We've we've got to avoid on semiconductors in general, uh, despite what uh, AMD is doing. But if we go uh, to socks on this, you know you can draw some trend lines in here and see where it's going to have some resistance. Uh, you know where where it's coming back up. The uh, the socks actually was trading down here. It bounced off its 200-day moving average. For this, this is the uh, uh, EMA, but uh, let me change this to the 100. Okay, you can see here just just in the last week or so, after bouncing off the 200, the the, the semis have uh, you know cleared the 50 and the, and the 100 dollars. So this is this is bullish, but uh, as you can see, we ran into resistance right here, uh, where where the high was a while back. Then we have another. We may have to get another test over here at fourteen forty six on this. You know, I, th I think it, it, it's it's imp they're improving in here, uh, which is good. Um, again, I think if you probably went back to the point and figure chart on the uh, the Philly Semiconductor Index, you might actually see that. Uh, yeah. Okay. See, we 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 we're, we're, we're talking about the double top breakout. This is actually starting to show some good improvement. Uh, you you could get a double uh, top breakout if you have have another another up day in the semiconductors, which would be bullish. Now you you can also see on this your next uh, area of support is up here around fourteen fifty. That's a, another way you can use these. You look for where it topped out before on the X, X's. In this case, uh, if we if we do have another strong day, we can probably get a, a test up here to the point figure socks. So. Um, I'm not. I'm not. I, I want to see a, a buy on the on the socks and the semiconductors. I want to see a little bit more strength. Uh, I want to see the breakout actually occur. You're kind of buttoned up uh, in the resistance right here. I think it'll, if if, you know, if the market keeps on uh, breaks out to new highs with the Dow, especially also, I think you'll start to see those things. So you might get a list of uh, semis together that uh, that you may want to look at, um, which could include AMD. Although I hate to chase something that, that's moved like that. Uh, NVIDIA has been going sideways for a while. That might be something to look at. Um, you know, you can go into the uh, into the industry group up here, find yourself a list of uh, uh, semiconductors that are, uh, let's see, here's, okay, if you go into industry group, you know, if you come up here and you look for uh, uh, semiconductors, I think if you just type in semi, you know, it'll bring it up. Okay, then click on the, uh, name here you can see the pullback on this but you're going to get a list of the stocks in here that are outperforming here's xilinx nvidia amd we just talked about uh ambarella just got upgraded to a neutral these are probably these are the stocks that are leading the semiconductor industry right now you got a ton of avoids you know these stocks if you look at their charts they've had pretty big pullbacks you know micron and all these but in the last couple of days you're seeing a bounce back so you may want to look at uh, an industry group here to find some semiconductor stocks that are actually starting to bounce off their bottom, and they're coming and they're they're springing up. Then take a list of, from some of these. Then you can go over to the uh, point and figure charts, 
You can find out, okay, give me the stocks, that, the semiconductor stocks that you broke out, or uh, compare some of these uh, names to uh, the names in the point and figure early alerts, and you can say uh, maybe Micron uh, will have a, a breakout at, say, $48 or $50, $50. Then you can put your price, your buy ticket at 50 and 50 10 and you buy the uh, breakout of Micron after it's bounced back and it's, it's beginning an up, uptrend again. All right. Well, that's all we have for you. All right. Well, that's all we have for you this week. Remember, if you have a question you'd like answered on the next Tuesday Tech Talk, email it into support at marketedge.com or ask one of our live chat representatives to pass your question along for the next Tuesday Tech Talk. Thank you for tuning in. We'll see you next week.